Dance is typically viewed as a very fun and enjoyable ex activity and sport. But there is a point in which this fun sport can actually become detrimental to a dancer's physical and emotional well-being. When a dance instructor's and peers pressure a dancer to conform to the ideals of the dance industry, a dancer can develop body image issues and become hypercritical of herself. And this is when the dance industry can actually become detrimental to a dancer's well-being. A study conducted by the International Journal of Eating Disorders found that 83% of dancers have reported some form of eating pathology. This includes anorexia nervosa, compulsive overeating, and bulimia. So what is the cause of eating disorders? Now the exact cause of eating disorders is unknown, but according to the Mayo Clinic, it is likely a combination of biological, psychological, and environmental factors. Now a dancer's environment consists of hours standing in front of a mirror, looking at herself, and critiquing her performance, her movement, and her body. Now, when a dancer compares, and while she's standing in front of a mirror and in her dance environment, she's constantly comparing herself to those around her so that she can either match her peers' performance or compete with her peers' performance. And this causes a dancer to become hyper-aware of her own flaws, according to the Journal of the Utah Academy of Sciences, Arts, and Letters. So can a dancer's environment make her more prone to develop eating disorders than a non-dancer? An evaluation on a dancer's environment reveals that it is the reason why so many dancers suffer from eating disorders. Now, the competition a dancer faces in her environment is one of the key, reason, key factors in why a dancer is more likely to develop an eating disorder. A study conducted by the International Journal of Eating Disorders found that students studying at ballet schools with the intention of pursuing professional careers in ballet were more likely to score higher on the eating attitudes test. Now this test assesses one's risk to develop an eating disorder. The study also found that professional dancers were more likely to, score, to develop or to have anorexia nervosa. And they also, then those who study at less competitive schools with a higher academic focus than professional focus. The pressures that a dancer faces in her environment also increase her likeliness to develop an eating disorder. Anais Garcia is an ex-dancer who described her battles with anorexia nervosa as she struggled to start a professional career in ballet. She had auditioned for the Baltimore School for the Arts, which is a high school with an exceptional reputation in ballet. Now, when she first auditioned, she wasn't accepted into the school, and the school gave her critiques like she was too soft or didn't have enough muscle tone. These types of critiques are highly detrimental to a person's like, psychological thoughts and can cause her to develop, to develop body image issues. Garcia eventually auditioned again for the school and was accepted, but she explained that at her time at the school, the school would talk about health, but then they would turn around and only cast the dancers for lead roles with the high, or only cast students with the, the skinniest dancers for the lead roles. This means that the, her and her peers were not only competing for the cast, the, to be cast in those roles, but they were also competing with their body types to be the skinniest dancer. George Balanchine is a famous teacher at the New York City Ballet he, who choreographed the Nutcracker. And he's, his aesthetic preferences have built a reputation for themselves. His aesthetic preferences have been described to be young, tall, and frighteningly skinny. And they've been labeled as a reason why there's a demand for dancers to have a very low weight in dancing. Professional dancers are pressured to match Balanchine's aesthetic preferences and are the reason why so many dancers develop eating disorders so that they can match his aesthetic preferences. The secreting of a dancer's environment also increases her likeliness of, to develop eating pathologies. A study conducted by Michelle Gelfand, the professor of psychology at the University of Maryland, found that ritualistic synchrony created a feeling of connection when a group participates in synchronous action. This explains why dancers develop a, typically develop a strong personal connection with their peers and with their directors. Now this bond can be highly beneficial for a dancer, self-esteem, but it can also become detrimental for a dancer when that dancer depends on the validation of her peers and her directors, and it also increases her willingness to conform. The study also found that synchrony increased obedience. Obedience is typically viewed as a very positive quality, 
but synchrony can lead to destructive obedience. Eating pathologies are a form of this destructive obedience because dancers are conforming to their directors and peers' ideals to the extreme that they're physically harming themselves. But others argue that it's not a dancer's environment that increases her likelihood of developing an eating disorder, but instead is more her personality that increases her likeliness. Because most dancers have the personality of being a perfectionist. A study at the Department of Psychological Sciences at the University of Connecticut found that those who have personality dysfunctions like perfectionism and have an unhealthy pattern of thinking and behaving are more likely to develop eating disorders. The study also found that there's a positive linear relationship between maladaptive beliefs and the eating attitudes test score. Now this means that maladaptive beliefs, which are negative beliefs in the environment surrounding oneself, contribute directly to personality disorders. Therefore, a dancer's environment increases her likeliness to develop personality disorders, and these personality disorders increase her likeliness to develop eating disorders. So although personality has a significant role in a person's likelihood of developing an eating disorder, when their environment encourages and condones unhealthy eating, a person's environment can become more influential in a, in a person developing an eating disorder. A dancer's environment is a significant factor in why so many dancers suffer from disordered eating. But this can only be changed if the dance industry decides to lower their aesthetic preferences and ideals and decides to accept and cast dancers with normal and healthy body weight. With the emergence of plus size acceptance, there is hope that the dance industry will lower their aesthetic preferences and will stop promoting unhealthy relationships with food. Thank you. Can you tell me what information you needed from your research that maybe you were not able to find or locate? I was hoping when I first started my research to go into depth about how a dancer's uniform or the costumes that they wear, like this tight clothing and the, the leotards and the unitards and the tights that they wear, how that would affect their body image because they're so tight. And when I started my research, I was hoping that I could find like credible articles and stuff about this topic. And the only one I could find was from the International Chair of Kinanthropometry. And it discussed how when a dancer wears like baggier clothes, they had a, they felt better, they had a better performance and how they felt better like about their body image and then when they wore like tighter clothing. And so I was hoping to find more. How is your conclusion in conversation with the body of literature or other research, research sources you examined? My conclusion was really influenced by the article that I found from the University of Connecticut because I, my research, or my conclusion was that environment, and the, a dancer's environment influenced her likelihood of developing eating disorder more than her personality. And the article that I found from the University of Connecticut stated that it, a dancer's personality was caused, or the personality dysfunction was caused by her environment. So it perfectly like summarized my, um, goal of my purpose and argument. Very good. Give her a hand.